Good afternoon, Kingdom Speakers. I know it's been a while since Derek has looked this good, or is that Doric? But that's what he gets for not showing up on recording day. But for the rest of you, thank you for being here and welcome to Kingdom Speak without Derek Casista. <laughs> That just really felt good to just yeah, say that. Yeah, you're because not. the way it works is when he opens his mouth to do the introduction, I never know what he's going to say. <laughs> so he needs to experience that. Um, let's put the shoe on the other foot. The other foot. How you're, about that? Yeah, you're not holding any so in, in, case, in, case you've, in case you've not noticed, Doric is not here as Bishop Booker has so capably labeled him. Mm -hmm. He is MIA, missing in action. You can decide whether he's moose hunting. You can decide whether he's fishing, golfing, can, golfing whatever it is. He's just not here. But I will tell you who is here today, and that is coming back for another episode. We have Bishop Tipton in the house with us again. Okay, now I got it. Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. I like when this, this this side I like. They love you, Bishop. They love yeah. you. All right. They you're, do. You're, you're popular. <laughs> they do. Uh, that is not an uh, underestimation or an over exaggeration. They've they've been uh, we've been getting some great feedback on the episode last week. Before we get into it again this week, because we cannot forget anything that Derek does, because. He'll be sure and bring it up. Let me guess. Uh, we're gonna have a. It's time for a review. Yes, we're gonna, we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk mm. reviews. Try to find one that's not a five star. <sighs> okay, okay. Listen, here it is. <laughs> the subject is four point nine out of five, and then there is this shock emoji. That's just this. <gasps> okay. Great podcast. Whoever the people are who gave less than a five-star rating must repent. All caps. This is a timely podcast, and I'm thankful you don't shy away from covering all biblical truths. Apple Podcasts may give you a 4.9, but I give you a 5 out of 5. And that is from G.P. Shaw. And so we are going to give an amen to him. Can I get a amen? Amen. Can I get a hallelujah? Hallelujah. hallelujah? I can't even begin to imagine how Doric would have butchered that handle. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to say it like it yeah. is. G.P. Shaw. He would figure out how to uh, how to literally butcher, mutilate that handle. But thank you for the reviews. And then he also says about merch. He's been doing better on that. Mm -hmm. We've like been the, selling, and, and ironically enough, we've been we've been selling more. Oh, really? It's kind of like a direct relation there, yeah. So, mm -hmm. if you haven't got your merch yet, head over and check it out at KingdomSpeak.ca. Now, with all of that co-host stuff out of the way, I'm back in my comfort zone now. And Bishop, we are delighted to have you back with us this week. Thank you. It's, um, man. Last last week, you just took us to some some depths and heights. Um, one of the one of the comments that I read already on on the episode was, "I didn't even have to go back and look; mm -hmm. I knew it was the table." Yeah. <laughs> table manners. They still remembered that episode from three years ago. So thank you for um, being willing to come back on and talk with us again tonight. Now, to the audience, I really wish, and we, we um, part, of the, part of the drive of what we're doing here at Kingdom Speak is to give our audience access to uh, just the, the opportunity that I, growing up in a pastor's home, have had all of my life, and that is sitting at the table and hearing men of God talk about the things of God, the kingdom of God, the ways of God, 
and and just glean from it. Um, obviously, the 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 supreme and, and primary call that is on each of us is the pulpit, but there is just something special about sitting down and talking about the Word of God. Mm-hmm. And so, I wish that our audience even could. Could ca- we could capture what we've already talked about just <laughs> setting up, but we're going to try our best to go back through some of this. But, um, Bishop, I'm going to just open up for you to kick this off exactly how you feel, too. Um, but we're going to talk a bit about understanding the ways of God. Yes, yes. First of all, thank you for the opportunity to serve. And... Uh, I don't even know my own heart, mm. but uh, God does, and my heart is uh, to serve, help somebody. Yes. And uh, I trust that that happens, just like somebody uh, took time with me. I'm a product of men of God over the years that poured themselves into me, invested yes. in me. And uh, so this is a... This is a high and holy privilege. And then the last couple of days, I've had a chance to be with Bishop uh, Dana McKillop. Mm. And I literally go to school. (laughs) I'm a student. I promise you, the last thing I said to him a while ago was, now you're you're always going to be my Joseph. Mm. And um, if you're my Joseph, which you are, then I'm asking again permission to be Benjamin, who will be your younger brother. <laughs> and um, when we get together, we're dangerous. You talk about iron I have sharpening. a dream. <laughs> I have a dream. Yes. <laughs> yes. And we haven't been able to pull it off on this visit, but my dream is to have you both sitting at this table. Oh, I would love that. And, when, and we get it and keep chiming in because maybe if enough of us pull in the right direction, we'll be able to pull it off. But we're really going to try to get Bishop at the table. But yes, yes sir, that that would have been we we should have just we should have just secretly miked you, and then you could have just given us an episode oh, for the last two days. Wow, it was incredible driving down the road. Mm. Uh, move of God, mm. just uh, it's only a handful of times with a handful of men. Of God that that happens. Uh, I remember the first time it happened. I was a Bible school student. James Kilgore was my pastor, and we were mm-hmm. on our way to Austin, Texas. He was going to preach. I was in a trio, and we were going to sing. Wow! And uh, he's. We're in the church van. We're driving from Houston to Austin. And I knew these things could happen because of the book of Acts, but I'd never really been a part of it. And Pastor Kilgore, just driving down the road, he said, man, let's pray. And there were four or five of us all together. And it's the first time ever that I experienced the Holy Ghost falling, going down Highway 290. I'll never forget it. Mm. And when we when we got there, there was already an overflow. And uh, I'll never forget that. Yeah. And a man of his stature who had preached camps, conferences, had a phenomenal church in that day. Uh, just uh, to watch how real he was. He didn't have to be in the pulpit to discuss the Word of God. Yeah, and you know that that was something uh, we've we've reminisced on this on your trip because it's been I think around ten years. Yes, since uh, we first were acquainted, and and my mind goes back to that that initial uh, introduction, and it was at a men's meeting, and we we just spent so so much time during those two days. And your impact that you had on me was as much sitting in the motorhome talking about the Word of God, and then the Holy Ghost would move in, and we'd 
cry and pray. Yes. And then, and, and, and it, it, it just, that was, that was one of those moments for me. Now, the motorhome wasn't moving. It was stationary. Yes. But, but, but we, we, we had encounter after encounter. And that's what I look for in relationships. I can be friends with anybody, but I, I can connect with someone who has that same desire. Yes, yes. Thank God for the McKillops Kingdom Speak and uh, this beautiful church family that has experienced this for decades now, an unprecedented flow of, of revelation. I remember a subject in that motor home, mm. and it was, it was about appointing someone. Yes. Do you remember I that? I sure do. And appointed it, versus anointed. Yes. 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 And and it was, if I remember right, it was Moses appointing Aaron. Mm. And you go to Hebrews, and it interprets it. It says, "He that was called of God, as was Aaron." So an appointment in the Old Testament became a call Calling in, in the, the New Testament. And that has stayed with me for, for over 10 years. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. And you see that pattern. Boy, we could just get off talking about that. <laughs> I guess that's what happened 10 years ago, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Are you even callable if you're not appointable? Wow. Absolutely. Wow. Saul, go. go. Go down to the street. Called straight. I'm sending you. If you're not sendable, then you're not then you're not callable. That's right. That's right. Mm. Mm. And this is what we want all of you to hear. This is, is something that happens every time we get together. Yes. And so you were you were you were already getting into it when we sat down. There there was no dress rehearsal for this today, and you was already starting the conversation about the ways. For of me, God. it begins every morning, and the older I get, the earlier <laughs> it, it gets. It's not because I'm so spiritual. <laughs> it's it's something going on in this body, I guess. Uh, but I, I'm in good company because in Mark 1, it said he, he arose early yes. in the morning. Yes. And uh, he found a, a solitary place uh, to pray. Mm. And <clears throat> I think that's, that is absolutely paramount and key. And not out of ritual or not out of just a religious act. Mm. but out of relationship uh, for him, by him, through him, all about him. Yes. And you leave the rest, the list, all of the needs and all of the dreams because I've, the older I get, the more I realize that he's, 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 he's just as interested in my dreams as he is my needs. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So uh, this morning it came to me uh, about uh, how purity and power work in tandem. Mm. Purity. Uh, I suppose you could uh, categorize it as as a a virtue, as a a fruit, as a, a quality of life. Mm -hmm. I'd even go so far as say as a condition of the heart. Uh, power uh, that would be more in the gift category. Uh, it would be. Uh, what is lacking, in, in, and has always been lacking in religion because he said it's, 
in the last days, one of the characteristics would be having a form of yes. godliness, yes, but denying the power, the power there, a yes. form without powers. In my mind, is is a good description of religion. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yes, absolutely. But power is easier to mimic than purity. Purity is one of the oh. hardest virtues oh. to try to duplicate or try to replicate. Yeah. Mm. yeah. It's, it's hard to pretend to be pure. That's right. That's right. Without, without, without derailing you on this, I'm, 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 my mind is going through a number of, of other examples of this. Is there also not this same tandemness with authority and submission? Yes, spirit and truth. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. right. Power and and it really does purity. fit in that gifts and fruit. Yes, yes. Someone asked me, oh, it's been a while back. Which is the most important, fruit or gifts? And rather to get get too technical, mm. I choose to answer that like uh, that's like asking a bird, which one of your wings? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> are, that's a good way of putting it. Yes. Are more important, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. But I will tell you, over time, I've changed my perspective. I used to have fruit on one side and the gifts of spirit on the other and how they complement, and they do. And I'm not saying that's wrong. It's just I've seen so much of, uh, I'll just say it, men operating in power of an impurity. And uh, I've watched it even continue over a period of time. And... There was no question the power of God was was evident. I mean, God was demonstrating himself. But obviously, uh, the, the fruit, uh, the gifts were operating, but the fruit was diminishing. And so I've come to the conclusion that the, in my way of looking at it, that the fruit actually carry the gifts. Because if they don't, eventually, if you have gifts operating without fruit over a period of time, some quicker, some longer, some sooner, whatever, mm. that's all up to God. I think sometimes it's God's way of hoping somebody will repent, somebody will mm. turn around. Well, it is for the perfecting. Yeah. 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 Gifts are, I mean, the gifts of the ministry was... You know, there's there's that. Our our gifts, and this is just uh, this is completely on the fly. So I'm I'm just asking this as you're talking. Our 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 our, our gifts and the intent of gifts to sustain us, or is the fruit to sustain us? I mean, gifts. Back to your point, really. Do they have a shelf life if there's not the fruit that is the continuous sustaining? We're eating of the fruit. If you use, if you if you pull it back to that narrative, gifts are not what keeps me alive right now. Right. They're right. always for others. It, yeah, well, <laughs> yes. They're always for others. And God will honor his word and he'll honor the faith of precious people that desperately need a miraculous work of the Holy Ghost. A gift? Yes. Yes. Uh, but at the same time, uh, those fruit, it's almost uh, the way I see it, it's the same Holy Ghost, but just different operations. 
gifts for others, the fruit, initially for me, ultimately, of course, for others also, but it's more of an inward work of the Holy Ghost, the fruit of the Spirit. And, um, and so it, it's, it's so important, that especially young men, don't get hung up with uh, the working of the Holy Ghost as far as the gifts and neglect the working of the Holy Ghost developing the fruit in your life. Because there's more, and I, and I say this as I still have myself in that camp of a younger man. So I know I'm losing my grip on that, but I'm hanging on as, <laughs> as hard as I can. Don't even, don't even. Hey, I can mute uh, your mic here. <laughs> I can just figure out which one it is. I still got time while I'm figuring it out. What number are you? <laughs> yeah. You can find it. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Check, 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 yeah. Check. They always like to chime in when I get talking about being a young man. But there, I don't. I don't want this to come across wrong when I say carnally. But but that's the only way I know how to say it from that from that humanistic element. Maybe there's more curb appeal to power oh, yeah. than pursuing purity. Oh, oh yeah, is there ever? Oh yeah, something spectacular. It's got a pizzazz about it. You're just. And it and it, it it attracts people, don't you think? Maybe that's why the Antichrist. Well, that a false prophet, right? You know, right. You know, it appeals. But, but the thing that, as as I I remember through the formative years of my ministry, I I can't. It's a gift. I can't operate in it if he doesn't give it to me. Exactly. Fruit. That's open season for all of us. We, we all can operate and should operate in that capacity. Absolutely. Absolutely. So really what you're saying is gifted people without character yes. are more of a detriment to the kingdom and ultimately really even to themselves, would you yes. say? Yes. If a man continues to operate in power but not purity, uh It'll not only crush him, but it'll crush his ministry. Crush. I've seen it. Marriage. It's a, it's a it's a sad, wow, sad thing. But on, I look back on my life. The gifts came over time. It seemed like slow in coming. Uh, but part of that, I was always tethered to a man of God. Mm. And God primarily worked through him. And I just watched as an Elisha to, and, and served him and uh, gleaned from him and watched him operate and work. But something I noticed in my own life when I became a pastor, because I longed, I did long for those gifts. And the, the, and Bible, that's so, that's okay. the Bible says to covet yeah. earnestly the best gifts, but yet show I unto you in a yeah. more excellent way. Right. And uh, love. And, mm-hmm. uh, and then all of the, the connecting virtues. I think the first one is love, charity suffereth long. Patience, that's one of the first uh, indications of, of real love working. And that's where you treat time again as your friend and not your enemy. And you prove that by learning to wait. What did you, how did you say that last Sunday? Love is not threatened by the calendar? Is that no, how you no, said that? No, 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 exactly. He's, no, love... Love treats that calendar as a friend and not as a foe. Mm. Uh, Times on love side. (laughs) I don't. I don't care how quick you think things need to be going or how hurriedly things need to happen. Yes, I I still believe that when. 
young men oh. faint and and uh it it's it, the promise is they that wait upon the <laughs> yes. Lord yes yes shall renew their strength yes. and the amazing yes. thing about that verse is you fly first then you run <laughs> And then ultimately you walk. walk, and that's what he wants all of this to 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 be, be distilled down yes, to. to get in shoe leather and walk it out beyond the appeal of the sensation. Yes, and yes, yes you walk yes. it out with yes. it day after day after day. And I'm finding when the fruit are right, and when you're in order, which was a big deal for a young preacher. Mm. And that's to have a pastor yes. and have a man of God yes. that you you serve. You serve him like Elisha did Elijah. I don't see any improvement mm. on uh, a, a young preacher's uh, ministry and being developed than that Elijah-Elisha relationship. Uh, and it worked, it worked for me. And I see it working in others that look to me now. Yeah. And so, uh, because you're, you, you've, you've, and, and, and not that they observed that cause you can, you can, you can sense it. Can't you, you can, you can tell, you don't have to even observe it yourself. You can tell if a man has been that man. He's been submitted. He's, yes. Oh yeah. It, it, it's it's detectable. If if you go back to that the whole discussion of power, I've often used this, and I've seen I've seen uh, these little fat chubby referees on a football field. You know they they can't bench press or or run or like the quarterback that's going. But buddy, when they lift that whistle. All the powerful people stop. There's, there is something about the structure of authority that supersedes the yes. structure of power. Yes, yes. And that's what you're talking about with being submitted and having that pastor in your life, and now men are doing it to you. Yes, yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And of the increase of his government, and peace, there shall be no yeah. end. There's guaranteed increase when that government is right. There's that order of authority submission. Yes, sir. Wow. So, how does this fit into? Because I, I really, this discussion of purity. Because I've I've seen this, and that, that's something that haunts me. As as someone who is still, for all intents and purposes, chronologically speaking, in the prime of my life. To see ministries that collapse. And and you really have put it into. Into, a a. You've you've congealed it down. To where we can get our hands on this, what are some of those elements that you think contribute to a man maintaining that purity? Because you you can you can fake, as you said, it's easier to fake the other side of it than purity. What what are some of those elements? Accountability, even if he's a pastor, there needs to be someone he's accountable to. Uh, his wife mm. needs to be accountable to her. Mm. Uh, he needs to be transparent with her. Uh, the only secrets he should have from her is the ones that he uh, will take to the grave that were perhaps in the council chamber. Sure. But otherwise, he's an open book yes. to her. Yes. I feel so vulnerable. Yes. When I don't have her around, especially when I'm out and about traveling, city, I know sometimes it can't be helped, but accountability is a big deal. Uh, and and of course back to uh, that personal devotion, 
uh, a deep devotion to truth, a deep devotion to the to the presence of God. Uh, it's got to be an ongoing encounter. The Bible is more than a manual. It's more than a tool of the trade. It's it's a it's a love letter mm-hmm. written to you from Him, and it it should become a joy. You should have not just uh, uh, open it for looking for a message. You you right. open it looking for Him. Mm-hmm. You're looking for Him. Yes, yeah. relationship. Yes, and uh, absolutely. Staying away from the mechanical. Uh, going through the motions and uh, and keeping it on a human level and uh, knowing that this is the only book on the planet where the author is always present. You <laughs> always read it until it reads read you. you. Yes, and, and yes, you dig a deep reservoir of knowledge c- pertaining to the book. And uh, read it out loud. Read it, read it, read it, read it. And uh, and in doing so, read it till he speaks. Read it till he speaks. He will speak. Mm. He is a speaking God. Mm. And uh, he will he will have something to say. And it well, may he... be just one word. Yeah. One word. Oh, I've had one word just change my world. Yes. One yes. world. Wow. So if if I if, if and I I appreciate you answering that because I I I think that's part of making what we're talking about shoe leather, as you had just talked about. We we fly and, and, and first we fly and we bring it down to shoe leather. So I think those are very applicable um, getting it on the main street of our lives, accountability and the relationship with God. You said something that I think we may be able to use to segue into what, uh, another part of the conversation that we had before we, be, we began recording, and that's the mechanics of things. You know, it, it, it is very easy in, in one sense, not not in the sense of being effective, but in the sense of just checking the boxes. It's easy to unpack the mechanics of how we have church. You can predict it almost. And for me, as, as, as third generation, fourth generation, um, church is all I know. And so we can get good at it, the mechanics of it. One of the things that you mentioned just in, in throwing stuff out here just a few moments ago was about holiness. So if we're not careful, holiness can become mechanics as well. We, we, we relegate it to something we do or don't do, something we wear or don't wear. When holiness is not an action, it's a way. It's a way. It's a way. Talk about that a bit more because... The, the, those aren't even close to the same things. <laughs> well, what did he say? Was it Isaiah? He Go ahead. Talked look about it up. a a highway shall be there. Yes. Yes. And it shall be called. The way of holiness. Yes, yes. Isaiah 35 and 8. <clears throat> Let me uh, just get it in the... Okay. And then highway shall be there. Uh, let, me, let me go up one. Man, how do we... How do we... How do we? How far do we go? <laughs> it's all good. It's <laughs> it's all good. Okay, strengthen ye the weak hands, confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that have a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. 
Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. All these are actions, aren't they? And the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. The lame man shall leap as in a heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert. And the parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water, and in the habitation of dragons, where each lay shall be grass with reeds and rushes. You stop me when you want. No, <laughs> it's all good. And a highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The yes, unclean sir. shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, though fools shall not err therein. No lion shall be there, or any ravenous beast shall go up, up thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. Walk. There it is. Walk it out. Walk it out. It's a highway, not a low way. It's a highway. <laughs> it's about excellence. Yes. It's about worship, really. It's about um, ascension. Um, it is a sacrifice to get there, but it's supposed to be. Uh, it's not to be easy mm -hmm. in that sense. There will always be a price. I think of uh, Abram. He said, "We're going to go to you, to y up yonder or yonder, mm -hmm. and worship." Mm -hmm. uh, the two young men didn't make the climb. It was just Abram and Isaac. Uh, it's a place of encounter. It's a place of presence. It's a place where, oh, filled with promises. Yes. It's, uh, it's our destiny. It's our inheritance. It's who we are. It's our identity. It's who we are. It's a way. It's more than activity, although there, there will be activity, but it's beyond activity. It's, it's a, a way that, uh, you can't you can't see it on the surface. You can't mm. you can't see it from the shore. It's it's a way, mm. a path. It, it's it's currents, mm. and uh, it's more than meets the eye. Yes, and, and 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 when when people's heads turn, when you walk into a restaurant with your wife. It's more than the hair, although it is the hair, and sure. it's more than the modesty, and it is the modesty. But pre preceding, proceeding, surrounding, above, beneath, there is presence. Yes. Angelic. There's, and even even the world recognizes. They can't put their finger on it. Right. They right. can't explain it. Absolutely. But they know there's something there. Well, and and there there is something, and I I feel the personal responsibility of leading the church that I'm privileged to serve into greater understanding of the ways beyond the actions, mm -hmm. because there's greater dimensions of favor, mm -hmm. uh, power, dominion, mm -hmm. whatever, right? Actions can become mechanical. But 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 ways are on another dimension altogether. Absolutely. So the people understood the acts of God, but Moses. Yes. Yes. And don't you think it was because his his he had a fearlessness to go right into the presence of God. Mm. The whole top of the mountains on fire. Yes. And, and yes. thunderings and lightnings in this man. Evidently had a heart for God and a hunger for God. 
And and don't you think there's a level of hunger here that's that's brings a measure of holiness. I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, it's a place talent can't take you, and I love talent. Oh, yes. It's a place where ability can't take you, and I love ability. Yes. But uh, the the men that I know of that are are pursuing uh, what I believe and and are demonstrating apostolic ministry, inside out, gifts, fruit, are hungry men. Uh, They're men. Yes. Hey, yes. I'm just hungry. Yes. I am hungry. I'm, I, I, I want to, what was it, the, the, John ate the book. Yes. And it was, it was bitter to the taste, but it was yes. sweet, sweet in his belly. Yes. And uh, the, the book says that, that uh, a hungry man, a hungry man, he'll loatheth the the honeycomb. Yes. And uh, hunger, I believe, is the measure of gifts, fruit, presence, mm. truth. Mm. Hunger is... Mm is something that he has promised to fill. And the definition of fullness in the Scripture, old and new, is overflow. More than enough. Not just Mm. to sustain or to... Mm. No, no, no. More than enough. Yes. More than enough. And I know for me, okay, and, and, and when you get around someone who has that same passion... There, there is that again, that organic spiritual connectivity that that takes place. But give us men that know how to go down and do business in the deep. Yes. Yes. That understand the ways and the paths that are in the sea. Yes. Yes. Because if we can drop, if we can drop below the surface. You can get if you can tap into a current that's deep enough, it'll take you so much quicker to where you're wanting to go, with with minimal input. But if you stay on the surface, it's a lot of paddling and a lot of effort to get there. Action. Up uh, there. <laughs> okay, I gotta bomb that. All right, all right. He did all right, it. All right. All right. So I gotta bomb that. That's if I don't, Gary will be on me. I was gonna say that's to the salvation of your soul because yes, it is. I was keeping track. Oh, was you really? And I was gonna wait until the end and so, go. Okay, he's off his game. No, no, no. <laughs> so on the surface, it's it's action, action, action. But if you tap into that way, and church, the, the game of church changes. And we've all been there when church has been clanging, if you will, because we haven't quite dove into that depth deep enough where we tap into the current of what the Holy Ghost is doing in that worship service, in that prayer meeting, in that message. But when you tap it, maybe even in a podcast. <laughs> I'm going to list what I call Holy Ghost sensitivities. Mm. Hebrews 10, 29 talks about dis- doing despite unto the Spirit of grace. Yes. This would mean you can actually insult yes. the Spirit of God. First Thessalonians five nineteen, which I believe quench not the Spirit. That's the one we heard the most as young preachers. Sure. Coming up means to quench, means to extinguish, to suppress, stifle the influence of the Holy Ghost. Then Stephen, he used the term, you do always resist the mm. Holy Ghost. This means to oppose or strive against. Then what I believe is the, there's two commands. One is quench not the spirit. The second one is 
grieve mm. not yes. the Holy Spirit of God, Ephesians 4 and 30. I believe those are the two guardrails. Over here, it's grieve not. Don't, don't do anything that would sadden or that would hurt. And I personally believe the Spirit of God has moods and feelings and emotions. Uh, hmm. Amen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woo, yes, yeah. it does. And uh, mm. it, you've you've seen it. I've I've seen it, and 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 probably even done it. I hope. I, I hope I'm 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 learning to be able to read the room better. But when someone gets up and does something and it's completely out of order in another service, it may be fine. Like the action itself is not what is wrong, but right now is not the time. Because the mood of the spirit, yes, tone, yes, is it's like a dove. It's oh, easily offended. It's oh. gentle. It's the Bible says that the spirit descended as a dove and remained on him. Yes, Pastor, if I had a dove on my shoulder right now. Oh. Uh. <laughs> I would weigh every word. I would be careful about every action. Everything that I do and say would be with the dove in mind. In mind. (laughs) And if we operated like that more, what could God do with us, through us, for us? I think of Noah. Out of all the animals on that ark, there was only one that he had a relationship with, and it was the dove. Mm. So much that he could he could release yeah. her yeah. and take her. Yeah. When she came back, he could take her unto himself. And, it, and it's very specific. It, it said because she didn't have a place to, to set her foot. Yes, yes. And it's all representative of the Spirit of God. Yes. The nature looking for a place to not just land but remain. (sighs) Looking for a a heart that's willing to say, okay, I'm hungry enough for you and you alone to come and have your way with me. However, whenever, wherever, whatever. Whatever. And that that surrender, that surrender, even when you don't understand, even when it doesn't make a lot of human sense, cognitive trust. Yes, Yes. I'm with all your heart, and lean not to your own understanding, but acknowledge Him. And that word acknowledge there, in all that ways, that word acknowledge is the same word that's used in in Genesis. Four and one, where it says, and Adam knew ah. his wife Eve. It's not a, hey, how are you doing? It's an Acknowledgement. Kind of yes. yes. Relationship. Yes. Relationship. Yes. Has anybody arrived? No, but we can pursue and we can uh, hunger. Well, th- this, this to me screams what Jesus was saying when. When he says, depart from me, I never knew you. And their response to that is, look at my list of actions. Wow. 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 I want him to know me. Oh. Not only do I want want to know him, I want to be known of him. And just like now, and I know it's this way in a marriage that has that proper intimacy and relationship, where there are moments where it's being said without being said. Yes. Yes. And you know. You just know. And I love that when that happens, not only in prayer with him, but in a church setting. Yes. 
worship setting. I, I'm, I'm begging modern Pentecost, please don't get ahead. Don't get ahead of what the Spirit is doing and saying. And it, hey, I'm the first one to admit there's times I don't know. But I have a hunger and a willingness mm. most of the time mm. to wait. Yes. Okay, God. What are you up to? Yes. Where are you working? What are you doing? And in a church service, and Bishop McKillop has taught me this, I've mm. learned to watch the body. Yes. And if that body is responding like this, yes. oh, you, you, you'll, you'll, you'll find it. You'll yes. find him. Yes, you will. You'll find him. Yes, you will. You'll find him. It could be a song. It could be a testimony. It could be uh, even somebody... When they pray, and there's a phrase, I don't mean to eavesdrop mm -hmm. when people are praying, but when you're around mm -hmm. anointed yes. prayer words, yes. you can't help but hear. Yes. And when you sense an anointing, when they say something, I, I've learned, hey, mark that down. Yes. Let's, let's see what God is doing here. And... Uh, when you sense that anointing on a, on, maybe you prayed for uh, someone that's remotely. They're not even in service, but you prayed for them, and there was a special Quickening, touch. Yes. yes, yes. You take note of that, okay, yes. God? You're work. You're working here. Yes. He he's he's not a God afar off. He's nigh unto them. But to keep broken heart, brokenness, tenderness, a tenderness to Him. Uh, let everything be done with the dove, with the dove in mind. Oh, you're 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 uh, you're speaking to me right now through this because I've heard myself say the right things, and I hear modern Pentecost say the right things. I've heard some good messages on holiness. It's just it's not always backed up. Uh, we've, we've learned what to say. So we've learned in, in, in keeping it to the track that we're on right now. We don't want to get ahead of the Spirit. Oh, okay. Well, I, I understand what Bishop just said. I don't want to get ahead of the Spirit either. And so we're, we're th this is what the order of the service is. We're going to sing here. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And, 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 and I believe in order. And if the Spirit moves, then we'll follow the Spirit. You know, that's what we want. But how long has it been since we did that? Mm. 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 How long has it been since we sung something that wasn't on the song set? That, that wasn't on the notes to be preached. We say the right things. You've stirred me with this today. I'm stirred. I feel like I'm on the road to Emmaus. Oh, yes. And when he revealed himself, they said, hearts. did not our hearts burn? <sighs> burning hearts. I want a burning heart for him. In and out of the pulpit, in and out of church, doesn't matter where, mm. when. A burning heart for him. And don't you think that's key to getting his heart? Yes. Yes. Getting his heart. If I've got his heart, I've got him. I've got his hands. I've got his voice. Bishop McKillop and I were talking about the kingdom. Mm. Hey, you just get the king. Yeah. <laughs> you get the king. You get the king. You got the kingdom. You got the kingdom. <laughs> That's exactly right. And when you have the king, the mechanics of the kingdom never satisfy.
we're tasting something right now mm. that I don't know that I've even partaken of it yet. But I know enough that he'll let you taste just enough. <sighs> mm. To increase that hunger for more. Daddy had a, uh, his dad came up from Virginia. It was real easy to get that cow out of the back of his pickup truck because he had these old slats. He didn't have a trailer. And he'd back up to a hill and put the tailgate down. And he got her out pretty quick, but when it come time to go back in, she didn't want to go. Mm. To this day, I don't know what he had in his pocket. But he walked over there and gave her a little taste. And then he backed up. Mm-hmm. You may, someone out there may feel like God's backing off from you. Or, or distancing himself from you. It may feel that way, but the purpose is for you to, to move from where you are. And he'll give you a little a little taste. And you just you just keep pursuing him. Keep keep reaching for him. Mm. Mm. Taste and see. <laughs> that the Lord is good. Yes. And in a microcosmic way, that's what he was doing on the way to Emmaus. He was just, yes. he was just, in in granular little ways, he just kept dropping until when they saw him breaking bread, they went, Whoop, "This is you." Yeah. 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 Wow, Bishop. Before we close out, why don't why don't you just pray for this this mm. um, audience that's here today? If there's anything left that you'd like to close out with, there's just a special presence of God that's come in here these last few minutes. You know, I don't want to embellish and make this thing bigger than what it is, but I've lived long enough to know that looking back, it was bigger than I thought it was. Mm. And it was better than I thought Mm. it was. I believe there are those moments when God will give a man, a woman, boy, a girl an opportunity to ask something. Mm. And whether you're asleep like Solomon was, that gives me hope. Mm. Yes. He's asleep, and God trusts him to ask any one thing, and God would grant it. God's no respecter of persons. And I didn't come on here thinking this, even it never entered my mind, but this is a special moment. God would put it in your heart, put it in your mind, to uh, to say it, whatever it is. Jesus, thank you for your presence. And your presence is fullness. And there's an overflow here right now. Give us ears to hear. Give us eyes to see. Give us hearts, hearts, Lord. Create. If I could ask yeah. one thing today, Lord, it would be create, create in me a clean heart and renew within me a right spirit. Whatever it is you're working, work your work. 
give you praise. In Jesus' name.